a week again. Victory begins with the name of Jesus on our lips. But it will not be consummated until the nature of Jesus is in our hearts. That's turning the world upside down. That's what does it. When Satan took over from Adam, he actually turned the world upside down. It was the right way up until then. It's been upside down until Jesus came. And these Christians, it says, turn the world upside down. Actually, they turned it the right way up. That's what actually happened. They turned the world the right way up. And you know something? It's trying to get turned back again. You and I have the challenge to turn it the right way up and keep it the right way up. But I've got to be honest with you. If you're not prepared to pay the price, it's not going to happen. And I've said this many, many times to people, I'm going to say it to you too. And I want you to hear me very clearly. You are the church for this millennium. You were not born on the day you were born and the day you were conceived by accident. I know that because I've read Ephesians many, many times. You were chosen in Christ before this began. Therefore, in God's mind, the ones that he has brought upon this earth at this particular time in history to beat this power of an antichrist spirit that is turning irrevocably against all that is Christian, you are the ones that are chosen to deal with it. You are the ones that he is prepared to equip to deal with it. And you think, but who am I? I'm a nobody. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too ugly. I'm too beautiful. Whatever it is. To anything if you want an excuse. But I believe it just so happens that my Father in heaven ordained the day that you were conceived to be the church of this millennium so that you would get the job done in this millennium. It doesn't matter if you're nine to your nine. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And you can turn this situation upside down with faith in the name of Jesus. Seek the Lord on the best way you can do it. He'll show you. Don't be afraid to share your faith with one another to talk about Jesus. You know, the hardest thing I found when I got to church, first started going, I'd stand outside Mass or something where my first parish I went to, and I'd be talking about God. I didn't have many friends after a short while. They, they didn't want to stay in the conversation. And they'd rather talk about the tennis or the football or something like that. Hey, look, God bless them. It's, it's amazing how many people do not want to talk about their faith, isn't it? I don't know if you've noticed that. You know, if you bring up a subject, oh, yeah, yeah, well, let's go into that now. I mean, you know, and they'll change it. Whatever happened. I'm not criticizing. It just happens to be a fact. Well, you know something? Don't judge them. Love them. Let something change on the inside of you. Maybe you might walk an extra mile. Maybe you might walk that mile with them. Then they might ask, why did you do that? Then you might say, because I believe in Jesus, or whatever way you want to put it right. God will give you an opportunity. My dear friends, you can turn the world upside down with faith in the name of Jesus. Let me see if I can conclude this way in a very in a practical way. Of the power of faith. <clears throat> I, uh, I bought a new car in 1990. And it was a Camry. And it was six months old. Then 12,000 kilometers on the clock. And I ended up in an accident. It wasn't my fault. Somebody hit the car up on West One Road. And, uh, and I was pretty banged up. So I thought, you know, this is wrong. It turned out to have about $14,000 worth of damage done on the car to be fixed. Which meant it wasn't worth anything because if I sold it again, it's been an accident. So when I went to my insurance claim, I thought, no, I have a right to what I purchased. So to cut the long story short, I kept telling the insurance, right with an insurance agent, <laughs> they probably won't go for it. But this is what I said, I said, okay, you can fix the car, great, no problem. Except that now I'm paying off for five years a car 
has had $14,000 worth of damage done on it, and my resale value has diminished because it's been a serious accident. I'm still a victim. Well, we can't pay you out. The car wasn't written off. No, but I'm still a victim. And I don't think that's right. Mm -hmm. Shook his head, went away, come back. And it's got a long story short, I kept presenting this case. Because I believed I should have my new car. <laughs> okay, for six months old. But still a new car to me, I'll paint it off, right? So I, um, anyway, I, they rang me up and said, look, we want you to go and see one we got for you. They've got a demo model. Okay, so I went down to Premier Motors down there and demo model. Wonderful car. Actually, he's only done 8,000 kilometers, right? It was not the same color, but it, it hadn't done the amount of kilometers. Great, hey? Good deal? No. I said, no, sorry. This is a second hand car. So I'm now paying off a brand new car, but you've just given me a second hand car as a demo model. So I'm paying $22,000 for a demo car because I've still owe on the car that's been damaged. But the other one had done 12,000 kilometers. This only done eight. It's a big deal. doesn't matter. It is still a second-hand car. If I sell it now, once I've paid this off, I'm going to be selling a second-hand car, not a new car, one owner. You understand my argument here? Okay? But I believed that I had a right. So I, I wasn't being belligerent, but I just kept presenting this case. It's got a long story short. This happened two or three times with various things. Finally, I got a phone call and says, look, would you just pop down to the car yard? Now, the, oh, the last time I went in there, there was this brand new Camry Spirit, burgundy, same colour and everything. Because I said, I picked the colour. It took me months to decide on the colour, so the colour's got to be right and everything else. I walked in there, and I said to my friend Bob, I walked in and says, you know, in, in all truth, this is the car I should have. I laid my hands on it. I wasn't doing anything like claiming, but it was just, that's the one. Very gentle kind of thing. That's the one. Anyway, I got a phone call a couple of days later. I said, would you go down? We've got something to show you. I walked into the showroom. The manager comes out and says, oh, you're Mr. Russell, are you? I said, yes. He says, mm, heard about you. <laughs> You've been hearing a lot about you. He says, yes, they, they rang me. He says, we have something to, uh, to uh, show you. Uh, and he takes me to the center of the, right, this is the one on display. Right in the center of the showroom, he says, would this suit you, Mr. Russell? And guess which car it was? The one I'd laid my hands on. You answer that question for me. But I had enough faith to believe that I could get the car that I felt I deserved. Because even if they'd have paid me out, I would have, could have bought a new car, but I'd been paying off the other one, but I would not have got enough money to buy a new car of the same value. In other words, I could have got one for $18,000 instead of twenty-two, but I've still been paying off a $22,000 car. Does that make sense? So it's still a, a, you know, a defeat, win, you know, a no-win situation. So that's what I did. And you know, praise God, just like stopping in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that's what I felt God deserved. Anyway, I got it, so praise the Lord for that. So I turned that situation around. It doesn't happen all the time. You can't snap your fingers at all of this stuff. So what I'm saying to you is this. Put your faith in the name of Jesus. And if you want to change the world, change yourself. And when you change, the circumstance around you will begin to change also. Amen? Amen.